Hey, folks, my guest today is Daniel Melkerson. He is building Pin Me Too, which offers a SaaS platform for managing business information and online conversations of large, multi location organizations across thousands of online services, apps, and other directories. They do this to boost brand management, and drive foot traffic, and increase sales. Daniel, you ready to take us to the top? Yes. All right. So when we last spoke, actually, we spoke a couple of times, but you, you communicated your your sort of last uh, round of funding was back in December of 2020, I think a 2 million Series A, correct? Yeah. yeah. And so we're going to bridge back to how you funded the business since then, if you've raised any extra capital or if you're planning to. But first, for people that missed our first episode together, who's paying for the PinMe2 platform? Uh, our end customers. That's the question. No, I mean, obviously, Daniel, I know that. But who, who are the customers? <laughs> Who's paying for your technology? Yeah, yeah, sure. Our customers are large uh, multi-location brands. It can be anything from retailers like H&M uh, to, to car dealerships like Volvo. So, yeah. And so Volvo would use you and across 100 or so dealerships in a certain geography or, or something like that. And, and they would use you to drive traffic to those dealerships? Yes, exactly. Same thing with oh. H&M, but for their stores. Okay. And so how many customers are you working with now today? It's around 500. Okay. Around five. So you said 550 last time. Are you above 550 now? Or have you been, have you decreased a little? No, no, no. Then it's, uh, it's around 500. I think it's, if it was 556, I am not hundred percent sure. It depends on how we calculate it because we usually, we don't calculate SMBs, which is which we call customers under 50 locations. But if I bring them in as well, it's over 700. So it's, it's large companies, it's around 500. But if we calculate the few SMBs we have as well, it's over 700. Okay, okay. Um, it makes sense. You obviously just split those into cohorts. But just to be clear, all 700 are paying at least a dollar per month. They're all paying customers. Yes. Yeah. Okay, very cool. So how have you, how have you been signing these folks up, right? What's your go-to-market look like in terms of growth? Uh, it's been, we're doing uh, B2B outbound sales mostly. Of course, we have a communication and a marketing department, but they are heavily focused on helping our uh, SDRs to book more meetings and getting more inbounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sales approach. And how, how many quota carrying reps do you have today? Uh, quota carrying, I would say 25. About 25. And are you, and what percent, I guess, of your total team do they make up? What's the total team size today? Uh, uh, of the whole company or the sales team? Whole company. 85. 85. So teach us a little bit about sales. A lot of founders are trying to scale their sales teams. You have a large chunk of your team dedicated to sales. Did you make any yeah. mistakes in your first couple of sales hires? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of them. I think that the biggest mistake, or in the beginning, you're trying to do everything. You're the, you're the startup, you're the founder, you're the sales guy. And then you hire a few salespeople that can do the same. You can imitate yourself doing everything in sales. You book the meetings, you, you, you have the meetings, you close the deals. I would say I'll, if I'm going to do this again, I'm going to make sure to to hire sales developers or uh, to book the meetings and then uh, sales managers to to handle the the quota carrying parts. Uh, so what, what's the ratio now? Too. How many SDRs per a? Uh, it's something we we should be better at. I would say it's one to one at the moment. So we have one SDR for one sales manager. We would like to see two uh, one SDR to two sales managers, but still, it's quite big deals. It's not super small deals. So the SDRs is doing quite complicated outreach and very, very, very qualitative outreaches. So maybe the ratio is good. I don't know. Maybe your data can tell me something more about that. I don't know. Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. 
A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. Right, so the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity, and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real time valuation data points found or share with us on the show. So traction, one point two million seed round, three point seven raise. They sold twenty two percent of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. Take me into the life of a pin me to account executive, right? In a given week, how many demo calls are they probably doing? Uh, anything between, I would say, 12 and 5. I see. And then in a given month, what, what quota do you expect them to hit? Uh, in a given month, let me see. I only have it in in, in year and in oh, year is so fine. Did, yeah, around two million, so two hundred thousand. Okay, so you so you expect them to close to about two point four million of new ARR each year. Yeah. Okay, that's a that's a lot. Do you have reps that are hitting that quota? Yes. Wow. Okay, that's impressive. I mean, most folks, you know, uh, you know, it's a million dollar quota target. How have you been able to get your reps to perform at such a high level? I would say so it's maybe five out of the 20 is hitting that target. But what they've done is they've been here a few years, between two to five, two to four years, and they built up quite a big uh, number of leads they are working on. So it's everything between you know, large companies and enterprise deals. So they have a few enterprise deals that they close every year, and then quite a lot of smaller ones. I think that's so do those AEs that have been with you for many years, do they get to keep the customers they signed three years ago and they count all the expansion revenue into their quota target? No, they leave, they leave that when we leave it to the onboarding team in CES to take over. And so then why all, do you believe we... it's an advantage that reps that have been with you for a longer period of time are hitting higher quota? I mean, you just said it was relationships they yeah. launched a couple years ago, they, right? They, yeah, they built up more, more relationships and some enterprise deals takes years. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. So when you say de you know deal prices are pretty big, I mean, what's the average customer paying you per month or per year? Uh, uh, Fifteen hundred dollar per month or year? Per month. Per month. Okay, got it. So I mean, can can I take fifteen hundred per month times seven hundred customers? You're doing about a million a month in revenue right now. That should be more. Sorry, you're doing you're doing more than a million a month in revenue. No, we're not. A little bit okay. under. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, because remember, you told me the 700 customer number. You said you also included your small SMBs in that, so maybe they're yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why we're not. I'm not calculating them. So you should take that number I said times uh, uh, 500 customers instead, and that is I see, I see. to the truth. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. So I guess I should just ask you. So, so what are you doing monthly right now in terms of monthly recurring revenue? Uh, yeah, I know. Last year we we, we uh, the ARR was five million, and now we're doing uh, MRR. I would say two hundred. Two. I don't have it in my head. Sorry, sorry, Nathan. No, that's okay. Take take your time. I'll do this. <laughs> I mean, March is about to end, right? So you have March's data, right? Fresh on your brain. How much revenue did you do in March? Yeah, around 50,000. 50,000 in no, total no, revenue? No, 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 no. I'm trying to do this from $6 and I'm, 
How much? Well, just let's just use sec. How, how much tick did you do in March? We did uh, in twelve. So four million sec. So 400, 420, 420 We did. Yeah. So so if you did yeah, four that, million. That is- if you did four million Swedish krona in March in terms of monthly yeah. recurring revenue, that's equivalent to about four hundred and forty thousand United States dollars. Yeah. yeah, it used to be. Now I think it's at, uh, I think a US dollar is like ten Swedish krona right now because the Swedish krona has been damaged quite badly by the war going on. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay, got it. So you're doing about about five point two, five point three in ARR to date, which is great. Um, how do you? Yeah. I mean, how do you plan to grow this year? And do you still have money left from the Series A round to invest in growth? Yeah, we have all the money left. So we did pretty much last year bootstrapped. Uh, now so just to be clear, you, you have 2 million today. We're recording this on March 30th. You've got about 2 million yeah. in the bank. Yeah. Okay. And so what do you plan to use that money on to drive growth? Uh, more, more sales. And we're going to grow and build more. We, we call it hubs around Europe. Uh, we, we work very remotely, but we have hubs. We have one in Poland for the Eastern, Mar- Eastern Europe and then Portugal for Southern Europe and, uh, and moving more into UK and Germany as well now. So we're going to keep growing in Europe. And where's your next hub going to be? Um, most probably Germany. Germany. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, where, I guess, tell me about funding, right? So do you, do you plan to raise any additional capital here in the next, you know, six to 12 months? No. No additional capital needed. Do you regret? I mean, you've raised what? How much have you raised to date? Around five million US. Uh, do you regret raising that money? No, no. I mean, you haven't really it's used a, it, right? Nah, two of them we haven't used, but the rest we used before. So mm-hmm. it's been, you know, we did a year bootstrap, and then another year we we used some money to grow faster, and then I don't know, maybe it's very Swedish to be a little bit careful sometimes. Use, you know, use the money well. No, I think it's fine. Was the last round really dilutive? No, no, it wasn't. It was only by uh, external uh, or internal investors, and it wasn't much of a dilution for us. What was the valuation that you raised the two million at? I don't remember. I'm sorry, I don't really remember what the valuation. I'm not even know if I am allowed to say. It. <laughs> you told me on the last interview it was two million on a twenty eight pre, so it was thirty post. Is that accurate? Yeah, it is. I already told you then. <laughs> what do you mean you don't remember? How do you not remember that? Equity is all that matters. And that's what takes equity from you is raising rounds. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's tw- it was back in 2020 and we're focusing okay. on sales and growing the business since then. And, you know, we still have the money. So we're happy. And, you know, fair, fair, fair. Yeah, yeah. So you're able to, you basically did that round and you only had to sell about 6% of the business. So you still yeah. own, I mean, you have three co founders too, right? Yeah, yeah. So what all together, how much equity do you guys plus employees, like internal people still own? Uh, around 50. 50. Okay. That's actually less than I thought. So the investors own a pretty big, you must have had very dilutive early rounds of financing then. Yes. We had one round earlier that was a little bit too dilutive. Uh, was that the 2018 or 2017 round? It was the 2018 round. The, the sort of first series A, 2.3 million. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 and it wasn't because of the round. It was because of uh, things in the ownership and uh, owners from before, earlier on. So we kind of clean out the, the cap table and it was a bit of a delusion there. But oh, are you not the original owner? I am the original owner. Yes, 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 yes. It was just that the other, other owners so we won, were not wanted on board anymore. So we needed to figure ways out to do that. So if you bought and, back their equity, though, that should reverse dilution not add more dilution no no no. the equity was actually sold to another investor that also invested ah i see okay Mm. so their equity is still not inside the company another investor bought it and got a big chunk of the business yes uh okay and that investor you're friendly with that investor though right it's not a nasty yeah yeah yeah. absolutely the 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 head of the board is from that investor so it was really good for the company but it ended up with a little bit too much of a dilution back then i see i see how have you structured your board uh, out there in malmo in the us you know there's a typical structure but it differs depending on what country you're in how have you structured your board uh, it's 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 me and the ceo and uh, the two lead investors uh, and one business angel that knows a lot about the business parts, mm-hmm. the, what we do. 
So, so there's five total, that one business angel, yeah. if there was a big disagreement on the board where that business angel side with you, your CEO and you, or the two investors? I don't know, really. <laughs> it depends on what question. Is he? Let me ask going... it directly. Is he your friend yeah. or their friend? Who came up with the idea to put uh, that person on the board? Oh, it, it, that was my idea way back. So I okay. think he would go with us. <laughs> you probably go with you then. Okay, interesting. Very cool. Anything else that you've been frustrated with that you feel like, you know, if you were based in the US, you would have been able to do X, but you can't because you're in Malmo? It's always frustrating when you're from a small country, I think. Uh, uh, because when we started here, we thought like, okay, we're going to go for the biggest customers we can find early on you know, around us without, you know, having to go to the U.S. and outside Sweden. And large customers in Sweden are small customers in the U.S. So <laughs> I think that is one of the, that, that I, I, I don't regret it. It was still a good thing because we, you know, we're the number one in the Nordics and everything like that. But the markets are small. So you need to grow outside your borders really soon here. That's not, that's not an issue in the U.S. You know? The nice thing, though, about your motion, you have 200 SMB clients and you've got about 550 more enterprise clients, is there's a big mm. pool of customers you can upsell to. I think you have yes. pretty healthy net dollar retention numbers, right? It could be better. Uh, once again, and this is something I regret before this interview, I should have known my numbers better. <laughs> but but we we really, that is one of our key KPIs to grow that because we actually- What do you want to hit it? What do you want to hit? 150%. Do you know what you're at now? Uh, 105. 105. Okay. Got it. And is that because churn is high or expansion is low? Expansion is low. We actually started our up sales, you know, more up sales team last year. Because we've been heavily focused on new new logos and new ARR in the company so far. Tell me about the upsell team. Do they have a quota for expansion? Yeah. What's the quota? Uh, this year, it's it's not the big five hundred US dollars. This year, five hundred thousand. Yeah, five hundred thousand. So that'd be ten percent expansion on five million yeah. base. Yeah. And, and so, do you the, the 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 upsell reps, as you call them, that carry a quota? How do you assign, do you give them like a million dollar book of business and they have to grow it, you know, 50% to 1.5 million? Or how do you, how do you assign quota? Uh, no, what we, they are very, very focused on doing cross sales at the moment. So not, not you know, upsell in, in, you know, more seats or raising the price. So we have different pro products on the platform. And new sales are very focused on, on one, the initial product. And now they sell the other products and they have, they are very open to do however they want. They focus from the largest ones and going down right now because this is new for us. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't, we try, we did it in the CS organization and this is something we did really wrong. So we had like what we call the customer success, success personnel that were doing upsells, which it's stupidest idea. I don't know why, why we did it because they need to take care of the customers first, make sure they're not churning. And when they have time and have an opportunity, they can do some sales. Now we have customer success managers and up sales, sales people, sales managers, which mm -hmm. huge difference. Interesting. Well, we'll see how it pans out. All right. It sounds like an interesting yeah. strategy, but in the meantime, Daniel, let's uh, wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, favorite book. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I have a book here, uh, Shoes Happiness, because you need to be happy as well when you're doing this entrepreneurship thing. So by Kai Pollack, a Swedish, really good writer. No, number so two, is there is... Is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, different one. Uh, I've been following Ben Horowitz lately because I missed him from before. <laughs> Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building PinMe2? Uh, Pipedrive for sales and Plan Hat for the CS organization. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, six to eight. And situation, married, single kiddos? Uh, divorced, two kids. Still 45 or you have a birthday? I had a birthday. <laughs> He's 46. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday. All right. Last, last question, Daniel. Something you wish you knew when you were 20? Uh, uh, not really. Yes, yes, go for it. Have fun. Things will pan out. 
Guys, there you have it. Daniel's building Pin Me Too, which is specifically helping gas stations, retail organizations understand marketing across many specific physical locations. They've got over 700 total customers today, about 500 he categorizes enterprise. They're doing 5.2 million in terms of annual run rate now, right now, which is $440,000 in March uh, revenue when you extrapolate that out. 85 on the team today, 25 quota carrying reps, some of them hitting a $2.4 million quota, which is impressive. We'll watch them closely. He's done this pretty efficiently in terms of capital. He's raised basically 4 million bucks to grow a $5.2 million business, which is obviously great capital efficiency. So Daniel, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares backend dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.